In this lesson, we will answer a key question, when should you use the population formula, and when should you use the sample formula to calculate variance and standard deviation? This is super important. Using the wrong formula leads to incorrect results. We will also discuss why we divide by the sample size minus 1 when working with sample data. As a quick recap, a population includes the entire group you are studying, while a sample is a smaller group taken from that population. For example, imagine your school has 1,000 students, and you want to calculate the variance and standard deviation of their heights. If you measure all 1,000 students, you are working with the entire population. But let's be real. Measuring 1,000 students' heights might take forever. Instead, you could randomly pick 30 students and measure their heights. In this case, you are working with a sample. And the cool thing is, you can use this sample to estimate the variance and standard deviation of heights for the entire school. In these formulas, sigma squared represents the population variance, and s squared represents the sample variance. xi represents each data point, whether we are working with a population or a sample. For a population, it refers to all data points in the entire group. For a sample, it refers to only the data points in a smaller group taken from the population. Mu represents the population mean, and x-bar represents the sample mean. Capital letter N represents the population size, which is the total number of data points in the population. Small letter N represents the sample size, which is the total number of data points in the sample. Sigma represents the population standard deviation, which is the square root of the population variance. S represents the sample standard deviation, which is the square root of the sample variance. The key difference between these formulas is how we divide when calculating variance. When we are working with a population, we have data for every single member of the group. Because we have all the data, we divide by the population size to find the exact variance and standard deviation. There is no guesswork involved when working with a population. However, when we work with a sample, we only have data for a smaller group taken from a larger population. This means we are estimating the population variance and standard deviation from limited data. The sample variance and standard deviation are just estimates of the true population variance and standard deviation. That's why we divide by the sample size minus 1. But why do we subtract 1? What is the reason behind this adjustment? It is to correct for the fact that we are estimating the population variance from a smaller group. This adjustment is called Bessel's correction, and it gives us a better estimate of the population variance and standard deviation. It improves the accuracy of our estimate, making our calculations more reliable. So here's the big takeaway. If your data is for the entire population, use the population formula. If your data is for a smaller group taken from a larger population, use the sample formula. Using the wrong formula leads to incorrect results, so keep that in mind. Now, let's go through a few examples to practice identifying if we are dealing with a population or a sample. You will need this for homework and exams, so pay attention to the keywords and context clues. We won't solve them right now, but I will help you figure out which formula to use. I will leave the answers in the first comment so you can practice on your own. Let's look at the first example. William went fishing 10 times last month. The number of fish he caught on each trip is listed. Is this a population or a sample? Well, we have data for all 10 of William's fishing trips. Nothing is missing. That means this is the entire population, so use the population formula. All right, let's try the second one. Five students are randomly selected from a math class and asked about their last exam scores. Is this a population or a sample? The key here is randomly selected. We only have data for a small group, not the entire class. That means we are working with a sample, so use the sample formula. Last one. The following data represents the number of free throws James made in seven attempts. Ask yourself, do we have data for all seven attempts? Yes, we do. Since we have data for every attempt James made, this represents the entire population. That means we use the population formula. You can find the answers for these examples in the first comment. But wait, do you know what variance and standard deviation actually mean and the difference between them? Click on the video on the screen to find out.